Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to continue from my last one where I took a server-side document generation and removed most of the steps. So if you did follow me in the last one, you would have known that I hard-coded in a contact ID. So what we need to do now is actually have this as a parameter that is sent when a user clicks a button. So I'm just going to create a new version. And I'm going to call the variable contact ID as well. So just in my set values right at the top, I'm going to replace this hard coded value with contact ID. And because we're going to be sending it in, I need to put in those percentage signs like that. So we'll save that and then activate it. And then because I'm adding this to a button, I just need to go to the drop down and click on how to launch. And then I'm copying the lightning link onto my clipboard. Um, but what I'm going to do is I already know what the domain is. So all I'm going to do is copy from the lightning. So forward slash lightning. So we're just going to copy all of that onto my clipboard. Go done. And then we're going to go into settings. It's going to run from the contact object. So we'll just head over there. And then we're going to make a button. So new button. We're going to call this run report. It's going to be a detail page button and it's going to be a URL. So you would have noticed that I only copied from lightning. The reason why I did that is because when you deploy from environment to environment, if you deploy this button as is, it will include the domain from your sandbox or wherever. So what I like to do instead is actually put in this variable called site.domain. Uh, let me spell that properly. Just like that. So I think I've got that right. So we've got our braces. Then we have an exclamation point, site.domain, and then it has the rest of the link there. And then right at the end, we want to add in another parameter that we're sending in. So I'm just going to copy this one. So we've got a, a ampersand C underscore underscore. We're going to put that on the end. And then we're sending in contact ID. And that's going to be equals. And then I'll just find the ID from uh, the merge field here. So I'll just scroll through. It's probably at the top contact ID. OK, so that looks good. We'll save that. Uh, whoops, it's not working. Site.domain does not exist, so maybe I typed that in wrong. So let's just see if I can bring it in another way. Site and domain. Check syntax. Um, it says there's no errors, but it also says it doesn't exist. Let's save and see what happens. Okay, that looks all right now. So I'm just going to quickly add it to the page layout as well, just so I we can test that properly. Coming back into the contact, we'll just refresh the page. And we now have our run report button, so we'll click onto that. Okay, um, and that's kept that tab up and that's all right. We're just going to come back in and we'll just check. So that's the time now. And if I open it up, there's my report there. So I've obviously given it a pretty poor title. Um, we could give it something better. But just for this example, it's just to show you how we can have that button on the contact layout send in the parameter through um, contact ID and then have that server side document run without any user input. In my next video, I'll show you how we can then automatically refresh the page um, so that we don't have this blank page here. And I'll also show you another option of adding the run report button to a flex card.